the first thing I have to say with this is anything that's going to deal with answering West Side type training, or let's just say West Side type training, let's just leave it at that. I'm answering from a frame of reference between the 90s and 2000. I was also there from 2000 to 2005. But most of the answers that I'm going to give are just from the 90s to 2000 because there is a lot of misconceptions. And that's what I want to cover with a lot of these questions are the misconceptions during that time period that I was there. And there's a ton of them. I can't answer what Westside does now. I don't train there. I addressed this in one of the previous videos. I think it's unfair. I don't think it's right. And I think it's actually ignorant to try to answer how a group of people train when you're not even there to know what they're doing. And so I'm not going to do that. So I will speak about the West Side training during the time period that I was there. If the question is going to address conjugate training, which is a method of training similar to concurrent training, and how I would structure that for some of the lifters that I work with out here, I will make that distinction between the two because that's not necessarily West Side, but it is heavily influenced from that. So I don't want any type of misconception of that recommendation being what West Side's doing now because I don't know. It could be. Get the fuck up. Simon says, get the fuck up. Throw your hands in the sky. What do you do with your max effort workouts during a circa max phase? How do you keep maxing with the different variations? I'm going to tap on this real quick, and then I'll come back to it when I talk about West Side in general. If you're going through a max, or if you're going through a circa max phase, the key word there is circa max, which means you're going to be training with percentages are, which are in a circa max range, which are going to be in 90% plus, usually with the top end being over 100% your maximum effort workouts have to be dialed back a little bit. When I was there, that was one of the hard lessons that we had to learn. For, the, for a long time, we didn't do it. And it was just running us into the ground. So <clears throat> we tried to change the circa max phase that we were doing to accommodate for the max effort work that we were doing. And then it just got to a point where we just started to dial back the max effort work that we were doing. By dialing back, I don't mean that we stop doing the max effort work. It may have been every other week for some people. The weeks that we were not doing it, accessories were still hit pretty hard, or what I like to call easy to recover movements. Good mornings in a three to five rep range with submaximal weight. Is what that was my go to. That's what I used during that time period because that addressed one of my specific weaknesses. It kept the weight at a range that it was easier for me to recover from and it wasn't pushed really hard. Some of the other guys would fall into concentric only movements because there wasn't the eccentric. That would be something such as a suspended good morning, a pin press, maybe a pin pull, something along those lines. So just easier things to recover from but not totally abandoning either. You had to look at how the Circa Max was set up. We went through seven week way. There was a Circa Max and there was a meat prep so, or whatever you want to call it. So just say a Circa Max is two weeks down. So there may be three weeks up, two weeks down. Then we went three weeks up, one week down. There, then four weeks up, two weeks down. It took a while. It took many meets to be able to figure out what the optimal was for us, which was three weeks up, two weeks down. And the first week we may have kept the max effort work normal, and then we would change it during week two, week three, and then we kind of normalize it again on week four. And then week five would usually be getting closer to the meet, so it would be not there at all either. So to answer the question, yeah, there's going to be alterations. There's going to be adjustments during the Circumax phase. The bigger question is, who, who's the person doing the Circumax, and are they qualified to do the Circumax? And I'm not saying that as a challenge. You guys need to remember that, you know, the guys that 
I was training with at the time. Some of them were there before I got to Westside. So you're dealing with, and I was there maybe two, two, three years before bands and chains even came into the fold. So, you know, we had three, four years of training just with bands and chains on top of years of training, just regular dynamic effort work before a Circumax even came into play. So if, I, I don't really see a need for a beginner doing a, a Circumax phase. So it's, the bigger question there is why are you doing the Circumax? Is it gonna benefit you and do you think it's gonna benefit you more than just doing a regular peaking phase? That's, we can touch on that later. This question is what determined the rotation of the supplemental and the accessory exercises? 